In this tutorial, we'll look at how you can use our libraries on a Macintosh that uses the new M1 chip. Before getting started, it's important to establish whether your digital audio workstation is using Intel programming or universal programming. If we go to our Applications folder and navigate down to Logic, then control and click on the application to select Get Info. You'll see that next to application it says Universal, which means that this can work on both M1 and Intel devices. However, if I look at another application such as Ableton Live, which is currently not compatible, and select Get Info, you'll see that the application has Intel next to it, which means that this application can currently only run in the Intel mode on an M1 device, which means that you'll have to use the Spitfire Audio plugins in the Intel mode. If we scroll down to the Spitfire Audio app and select Get Info on this, you'll see that by default, when you download our app on an M1 device, you'll download it in the universal mode. And if you need to use your DAW in Intel, you need to make sure that you're opening the app using Rosetta. I'm now going to split the video into two parts and include the timestamps in the description below. In the first section, we'll have a look at how to use plugins on an M1 device where your DAW needs to use Intel. And in the second part, we'll look at how you can use our new betas and the libraries that are fully compatible to use applications like Logic natively. And I'll also discuss in the middle of the video how to use our plugins on both a DAW that uses Intel and another DAW that uses Universal, should you need to use two different DAWs on your M1 system. First, let's have a look at how to use our plugins on M1 if your DAW requires to be run in the Intel mode. If I try and open Mrs. Mills Piano, which is compatible with M1 in this DAW, you'll see that we've incurred error 1. This is because the plugin that we've downloaded is M1 compatible, but the DAW that we're hosting it in can only use Intel based plugins. So to fix this, we need to quit out of our DAW and we need to navigate to the Spitfire Audio app in our Applications folder. Here, select Control and click to select Get Info. And you'll notice next to the application we have Universal. To open this in Intel mode, we need to select Open using Rosetta. Now when we open the Spitfire Audio app, we'll be running Spitfire Audio in Intel mode. The next thing we need to do is navigate to the product page and repair the library that's affected. Make sure that the location indicated here is the correct location for where the library is installed. If you need to change this, simply click on the search bar here and navigate to the correct location for the folder. When you're ready and the correct location is selected, click repair. The library will now authenticate and repair, which also means that the plugin will be replaced. Now the download's complete, we've now got the new Intel based plugin. And when we open Mrs. Mills Piano in Ableton Live, you'll see that we no longer have an error and the instrument now works. However, if we switch back to our Applications folder again and select Get Info on Logic, you'll see that Logic is running in the Universal mode and is not running in Rosetta. So if you do need to run Logic and Ableton at the same time, you'll notice that now when we open the plugin in Logic, there's an error. And this is because we're now running the Intel plugin that's not compatible if you're running your software in the M1 universal mode. So if you do need to run Logic at the same time, you need to also select Open using Rosetta. Now when we open the plugin in Logic, you'll notice that we no longer have an error. If Rosetta mode is not available on your system to select in the Get Info pane for the application that you need it for, you can simply install this on your system using the terminal command listed on our help article for using Rosetta mode, linked in the description below. Copy the command that's here, then open the terminal application, press Command plus V to paste the command into your terminal, and then select Enter. Type A and then select enter again to install the software. We now have Rosetta 2 installed successfully on our M1 computer. In the next part of this tutorial, I'll show you how you can install one of our betas or M1 compatible libraries 
to work on a DAW that is compatible with the M1 system. I've opened the OPW plugin and you can see we're getting error 1 here. This is because in this instance I've installed the Intel version of this plugin but I'm using Logic in the native M1 mode otherwise known as Universal. So the first thing that I need to do to fix this is to quit out of Logic. Then I'm going to navigate to the Applications folder and locate Spitfire Audio, select Get Info and check that Open Using Rosetta is not selected. If it is, make sure the box is unticked. Now I'm going to open the application. Now that the application is open in the native M1 mode, we need to repair the library. So you navigate to the library page, select repair and double check that the repair location is correct below. If you need to change this, you just click on the box above to navigate to the correct location. When the correct location is selected, hit repair and the library will authenticate, repair and replace the plugin, patches and presets. Now that I've repaired the library, whilst the app is in the universal mode, we need to check whether the library is compatible or not. This is our compatibility chart linked in the description below, and it will be updated whenever a library becomes fully compatible. You can see here that OPW is not yet compatible and is in beta mode, so follow the link to the beta here. Once on the library page for the beta, you'll see there's a download link for the library plugins here. On the WeTransfer page, you can download the plugin that you need. When you open the plugin folder, you'll see that we have four options. VST and VST3 are used by most DAWs, whilst AAX is used by Pro Tools and Sibelius. As we're using Logic, we're going to use the AU plugin. This is also used by other Apple DAWs such as GarageBand and other third-party DAWs such as Ableton. I'm now going to unzip the folder and then copy this into my components folder. The components folder can be found in Mac HD, Library, Audio, Plugins, Components. Here we can paste the new plugin and replace the old version. Once we've replaced the plugin, we need to make sure that we enter the terminal command also on the specific plugin page on our website. If I wasn't to enter the terminal command and I open Logic straight away, you'll see that we have an error here caused by the fact that the component cannot be scanned for malicious software. So what we need to do is first of all highlight the text for the plugin that we need. As we're only using the audio units plugin, we can just use the one terminal command here and we don't have to worry about the other plugins below. Select command C and then open the terminal application. Now that we're in terminal, simply select command V and then press enter or return. You'll see that we have no other error messages here as the plugin is now authenticated on our system. Now when I open logic, you'll see there's no error message. We can now open the library from our AU instruments list, SA recordings, OPW, and you'll see that the plugin no longer displays an error as we've successfully installed the beta. If you're using Logic and you find that the plugin is not appearing in your plugin list, it's worth checking that it's also passed AU validation. To check this, go to Logic Pro, select Preferences, Plugin Manager, and here navigate to Spitfire Audio or SA Recordings depending on where your plugin is placed. You'll see on the right side here under Compatibility all the plugins should be successfully validated. If you find the plugin hasn't successfully validated all you need to do is check the box on the right hand side and then select Reset and Rescan Selection. You should see that the AU validation has succeeded but if this is not the case, please reach out to our support team at spitfireaudio.com forward slash support. Please bear in mind that if you're using our M1 compatible plugins, you may own other software that is not yet compatible. So if you're running your digital audio workstation like Logic natively on your M1 system, whilst your Spitfire Audio plugins will work, your other library plugins may not work. So the best option in this case is to run Logic in Rosetta mode and go back to the instructions for the Intel install. Due to the previous install that we did with Ableton and Mrs. Mills Piano, I've now broken the install when I've attempted to open Mrs. Mills on our native version of Logic. 
So I just need to quit logic and then double check that the plugin is actually compatible. As you can see here for Mrs. Mills Piano, the plugin is compatible. So in this instance, I just need to navigate to the applications folder, find the Spitfire Audio app, select get info, and then double check that we're not opening using Rosetta mode. If this is unselected, we can go ahead and open the Spitfire Audio app, navigate to the product page, and then select repair. Double check that the repair location is correct. And if this is not the case, click on the folder icon above here to manually navigate to the correct location and then select repair. As you could see on the compatibility list, Labs is also compatible. So if you need to repair all of your Labs libraries, you simply click on any Labs page, select the cog menu, and then there's the option here to repair all labs and this will automatically repair your labs libraries but please be aware that this process sometimes does take quite a while. Now that we've repaired the library we can reopen Logic, select Mrs Mills Piano from our AU Instruments list and then open the plugin and you'll see that there's no longer an error. Thanks for watching Spitfire Clips. Let us know if it was too long, too short, too fast or too slow in the comments down below. Hit like if we answered your question and subscribe for more clips, tips, tricks and exclusive Spitfire content.